Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, here for an Inside the Birds podcast that's going to bring you even closer to the NFL draft. we got a lot of stuff brewing, Adam, uh, before the draft gets here. A lot of intel still left to be uh, gathered by us. We have the Eagles making a free agent signing at wide receiver, just probably not the name that people were <laughs> expecting. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about their their history. Um, well, about the, not their history, but the, the fact that they picked 15 and 18. We'll get into what that usually looks like when you're picking in that slot over the last few years to give an idea. And uh, we'll, if we have some time, we'll answer some ITB questions as well because we had some good ones. Um, the big thing is we're going to get into pass rushers now with Greg Cosell this week on the Intel with Greg Cosell. The last one we did last week on – Defensive backs was just amazing. Uh, a lot of great feedback. And I think we – now there were a couple of guys that we'll probably have to ask Greg about. Um, maybe on our last pod we'll do like kind of a hodgepodge one because I know we didn't get to Jalen Petrie, uh, Petre yeah. from Baylor. A lot of people want to know about him, Charles Cross from Maryland. Uh, and there are probably a few pass rushers that he will not have seen by the time we get to him. So we'll, we'll make sure we get to um, most of those names that people are asking about. But this is going to be – Pass rusher, Adam, um, you know, is going to be really interesting because, as I've said a couple of times, the Eagles now have three different types of ways you can rush the passer, right, from DN, D-tackle, and strong side backer. And a lot of the pass rushers in this class can fill multiple roles or just maybe one of them. So um, I think what's going to be important on Greg when we talk to Greg and for the show is not just say break down this pass rusher, but how does this guy or does this guy fit into what the Eagles are currently doing? That's going to be huge. Oh, look, the the four I. Uh, we talked about this in midseason when we heard they were. What, you know, we were trying to figure out why Cox isn't doing well. We found out it was the four I. Uh, the, the question is in year two on Organa. Yes, there are going to be some adjustments and some changes, but he has a philosophy. We saw a lot of it, so we're going to see what adjustments are going to be made. And you you talk about D line. There's no question they need a DN. We know that everybody knows mm -hmm. that they need a yep. D tackle. Cox is. I, let's be real, it's probably going to be gone after the season. Hargrave is going to be here a long time. Milt Williams, they haven't decided yet whether he's a starter or not. My sense is probably not, uh, though they love him. He's an excellent third tackle, so they need to add there. They, they still have – you know, the interesting thing is, you know, we're we're now 15 days away from the draft, and almost all the needs that we, we outlined weeks ago are still there. I don't know how much, much has changed. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because we've talked about safety and I forgot to mention this about a minute ago. We're going to talk about Teron Matthew. Um, I know we're getting a ton of questions about him. Um, we've we've discussed already a little bit that we, we knew that the team was interested in him, had discussions about him. There's been some more recent stuff come out. There was a really interesting story that came out by a Kansas City writer who got a sit-down interview last week with Teron Matthew, and it was extraordinarily revealing. So we'll get into that a little bit well uh, as well as it pertains to the Philadelphia Eagles. So make sure, um, A, you're catching the Greg Cosell work this week on pass rushers, and B, um, and 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 this this is the heart of the issue with pass rushers, right? The Eagles need a defensive end. They need that body. But where is the room for the defensive end in their pass rush that they're going to get? Because most of the time, Jonathan Gannon is going to rush the passer with four guys. He's, you know, it's a four-man rush. Even if he blitzes more, like Todd Bowles blitzes a ton, but he doesn't yeah. blitz a hundred percent of the time. Most of the time, he's still throwing a four-man rush. So if we know that Hassan Reddick is staying on the field as an edge rusher, and we know that Josh Sweat is an edge rusher, what does that other defensive end do? Does he kick inside now? Does he? But because they do have Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox to rush from the inside, so there's going to be a lot of bodies. And um, there's probably going to be a rotation, which we didn't see as much last year. But that's a good thing. There'll be depth this year and there'll be a rotation. But I'm sort of fascinated to see, A, you know, who they pick or who they get at defensive end and, B, how they use that person. Just because remember, I can't imagine they spent all that money on Hassan Reddick to come off the field on third down. Sure. Just remember, after this season, Graham could be go gone. Yep. Barnett could be gone. Oh, should be. Yeah. Jack, nobody knows anything about him. Same with Malvo. They're all just backups. As we right. said on the last show and the show before that and the show before that, they got one solid guy you could depend on, Joshua, who signed long-term. So absolutely defensive ends are needed. It's obvious. And 
D tackles a need. That's obvious. Corners an obvious need. We've talked about this for a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, they still don't have that young corner opposite um, Slay. He's also now 31. Safety still need. I mean, it's remarkable. They're the same needs we've been talking about and the fans have been talking about for months. They're still there. Yeah. Now, I don't know if the Eagles feel like they have to get a defensive end who has played in kind of a 5-2 front or 5-1 front in college, but they definitely will be getting a defensive end who has to be or will get used to another body to his right, you know, when they're on the line of scrimmage because Hassan Reddick's going to come down and be that fifth guy in the line of scrimmage, so we, which has not been anything that we've really seen uh, until last year when Jannard Avery would come down and be on the side of, uh, I guess it would be either Josh Wett or Derek Barnett. So Barnett's used to it. Again, maybe that's another reason that they brought him back over some others because he's now been accustomed to that. He's had a year of indoctrination to what that's like. So um, that'll be really interesting, and we'll talk with Greg on who kind of played in those type of schemes in college and who might fit. Yeah, looking forward to that. In fact, it, it is so deep. When you when you look at the list of guys – at DN and D tackle, the list is really significant. Now, Trevon, Trevon Walker, we'll get into trade possibilities in the, over the next couple of shows. Mm -hmm. He's so talented, uh, who, 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 who at the NFL level will line up at D tackle and DN. I mean, it's, you know what's amazing? Georgia's got a bunch of defensive linemen for this draft. Holy smokes! I think I, I don't think it's going to happen, but they they po theoretically could have all four wait, all four defensive linemen picked in the first round, right? I mean, you got Jordan Davis, you got um, Trayvon Walker, you have Devontae Wyatt, and I thought that there was a fourth one whose name just isn't coming to me now. But even if it's just three or four, that's that's almost Alabama. Amazing. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Right. It's unbelievable. pretty incredible. And Georgia's got a, a good program. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, they've been known for years for some offensive guys, but they're they're getting some uh, defensive guys here. So I'm uh, looking yeah. forward to, to uh, doing that show with Greg as it is a very super deep defensive line class. It's um, there's good depth to it, is, is the word. And, uh, Look forward to talking to Greg about that and kind yep. of figure out where they're going here. Definitely. All right. Andrew DiCecco's Draft Dream Series will continue this week. Uh, we had an awesome conversation with Michael Griffin last week. We've got um, another small school prospect uh, who's hoping to get drafted this week coming up. Really interesting story. I'm not going to give away the name or anything, but just make sure you're you're checking it out. It's going to be a great one. And keep checking out InsideTheBirds.com because we have always got content uh, day in and day out there, Andrew, myself, Adam. So always make sure you're checking out InsideTheBirds.com. Please uh, get your uh, subscription. Have it come straight to your reader. It's free. And uh, we all like writing. So And uh, we'll probably have even more content as we get closer to the NFL draft, which is just 15 days yeah. from today, today being Monday, which is it's hard to believe, man. It's really hard to believe, but we're getting that close. Looking forward to it, yeah. Because the, the, the Eagles have two picks, right? The mm -hmm. Giants have two picks. There's there's a lot of intrigue with this draft because of a lot of the transactions that have happened here. Then you got Carolina at six, who um, the Eagles talked to uh, leading up to the draft. Actually, quite a bit, we're told. Uh, they pick at six. The Giants are at five and seven. Uh, the uh, old friend Joe Douglas he, 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 in the uh, the trade last year uh, for Jamal Adams are at ten. Mm -hmm. Seattle finally got their – they got a first-round pick back from, in the Russell Wilson trade. And Atlanta needs corners. They need some of the need, they have some of the needs that the Eagles have. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of intrigue in what could happen. Just to clarify, in case anybody's blogging off this, when you said the Eagles talked with Carolina, last you were talking year. about last year's draft, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, leading up quite Just a bit. making sure. Just yeah, yeah. making sure. sure. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's get into some of the uh, – the transactions here. The Eagles signed a wide receiver slash return specialist or kick returner. Is it Devon Allen or Devin? I think it's Devin Allen. Okay, yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. I, I think it is Devin Allen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they were there like many teams at his pro day. When I say pro day, he was at the Oregon pro day, and uh, he happened to be there. Uh, the, the problem with him was uh, multiple ACL injury, ACL injuries. Both knees have been repaired with ACLs. <laughs> Um, he also has had another, he has another knee injury that he's had in his career. That's why he hasn't played football other than being an Olympian. We'll get into that. Uh, but he, like a lot of teams that were there, he looked really healthy and explosive. Mm -hmm. uh, the Eagles brought him in, uh, on Thursday, he sat down with everybody and then they signed him Friday to a contract. So there are other teams that involved and it, taking a shot here. That, that's all it is. It's not a big deal. It's, but the guy's an Olympian, 
He's explosive. We know about the injury history. Someone jokingly said, is he going to be better than uh, Jeremy Bloom? I'm like, you hope so. <laughs> now, the issue with Jeremy Bloom was he was a skier, right? Yeah, and sure. so he, he was – I remember it being described to me – because of all the time he took off from football at Colorado, then go do be an Olympic skier. He was so accustomed to having his ankles locked into those boots, right? That the flexion in his ankle that he had in college was no longer there. And you could see it was a straight line runner. He was not, that was rough, man. They picked him in the fourth round. That was, that was Was a bad job. I'm pretty sure Jeremy Bloom was a uh, Bloom was a fourth was round a pick. I'll, I'll look. I thought it was the fifth. You know what? Even if it was the fifth, you never made it. <laughs> it was made it, it was too high. It was yeah. too high. Yeah, you never made it. Um, no disrespect to Jeremy, but he just was not an NFL football player when they drafted him. Um, now this kid is a hurdler, so it's not like you have to worry about uh, him doing a completely other sport. But Adam, you're you're right. I mean, the, he has not played football since 2016. That's that's six years. I, know. I mean, that's a long, long time. How old is this guy again? Um, by Bloom, I was right. It, it is uh, 20. Uh, it was a uh, fifth round pick. Um, he was a fifth round Allen round is 27, turns 28 December. Wow. Um, look, he, here's the thing. He, this guy's Olympian. He's super explosive. I understand that he's had several knee injuries and repairs and so forth. And as mm-hmm. he said, in fact, the only he has not been a factor in football since 2014. But the workout was so good that the Eagles felt compared, uh, compelled to sign him. So okay, you take mm-hmm. a shot. You bring him to camp. You see what he does. If he doesn't look right, you just cut him. It's, it's really no harm, no foul. It doesn't no, really matter. No, of course not. Of course not. I mean, yeah, they, but and I know I, some people yeah, sure. Some people are like, well, hey, you know, this is like Jordan Maialata. You took a chance on him in the seventh round. Traded. Not really because this guy hasn't played – I know Jordan Miley was very young and and just ultra athletic and not. I mean, I don't know well, if they never knew played football before. <laughs> yeah, he never played football, but I don't know if they knew about the back or knew that would be an issue or anything like that early on. But I mean, this 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 is the longest of the longest of the long shot. I mean, guy has not played football in six years. So, but again, it's just a it's just a it's just an opportunity here to see give a guy yeah. a shot. Now, I'm going to make a prediction because of the type of receiver he is and because of the super explosion, he's going to catch about. I don't know, a million or two go route touchdowns in OTAs against air and then in training camp, maybe against like fifth string corners. And people are going to be like, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. And then in the preseason, he might get out there and catch a few touchdowns the same way. He's going to be the Henry Josie, the Paul Uh, Turner, the Rasheed uh, Bailey. He's going to – although Rasheed probably should have made the team. But um, he's going to be that guy because he's got the speed, right? And you know he's going to run the one route that everybody loves, the the sideline. Bryce Treggs just run down the field and catch the ball route. (laughs) Who's an agent now? Bryce, I was just going to say, Bryce Treggs is an agent. Jeff and I just saw – we talked to Rasheed Bailey for a while at the Maxwell Club Awards. He's back in the CFL. Yeah, he's he's uh, done well there. He's done well. Yeah, great great guy. Yeah, we he, you're right, absolutely right. He should have made it. They screwed him over the first year when he clearly made it. He was arguably the best receiver in camp that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, just didn't drop anything. But anyway, uh, yeah, look, it, they're taking a shot here. It, it's kind of a fun signing. Three time national champion in 100 meters, two time Olympian. It's, his workout was explosive. Just take a shot. Yeah. All right. Well, at least it'll be fun. It'll be something fun yeah. to watch at uh, at the OTAs. And by the way, on that, if if what you say happens, if he starts mm-hmm. going off in the OTAs, it you're right. He's going to be phenomenon. He's just it's it's he's just going to be one that. of these all season superstars like Nay Brown who couldn't catch a cold when it mattered. Um, uh, Henry, Henry Hank Basket. Remember Hank Basket, one of the all time uh, was it training camp warriors. He was oh god, god yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're gonna. It's gonna be the because he's probably gonna catch most of his passes from the stash from Minshew, right? So uh, the yeah. stash to the dash for 50 yards, bam! That's to the house. I can see it happening time again. And then when they cut him at the end of uh, training camp, if he makes it that far, people are gonna be like, "What are you crazy? We this is your oh, best Henry Josie, <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, let me tell you something. That Henry Josie stuff. Oh, I remember. Yes, people had because he was cut. Oh, they <laughs> like it, it was bad. Like really, like the Eagles are clueless, morons, idiots. Right, right. It wasn't quite to the level everyone should be fired. I love when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> everybody should be fired. <laughs> hey, fire everybody. 
<laughs> Eagles lose two games in a row. Everybody's got to go. Fire everybody. <laughs> Imagine. No, and, and by the way, the, every fan base is like that. I, I get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll Everyone. I agree. I agree. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, Teron Matthew. Yeah. Um, before we get into that, as we always been tell, as we've been telling you, we've got a new partner, our friends at Devacor. Over the last year, we've all seen what's known as the Great Resignation. It's been very clear that there's no better time to change careers than right now, the good old present. Devacor is a Philly area family-owned career development company that helps gu- guide hardworking professionals on the path to a new and fulfilling career. Unlike those big companies. In the career development space that offer the same cookie cutter advice and services, Devacor's certified career development team is hands-on, passionate, knowledgeable, and takes pride working closely with their clients to ensure that their experience is personalized and tailored to their needs. So whether you're in need of a new resume, cover letter, CV, or you want to optimize your LinkedIn profile, or just work with a career coach, Devacor has you covered in all spaces. So go to devacor.com slash birds to schedule a free 15-minute career coaching consultation and to receive an exclusive 15% discount on your next order. That's devacor.com slash birds to schedule a free 15-minute career coaching consultation and to get 15% discount on your next order. All right. Well, speaking of discount, I think the Eagles would love to have Teron Matthew at a discount. I don't think Teron Matthew wants to give anybody a discount. So um, let's get into this because there's, to me, Adam, there's two legs to this story, right? Yeah. There's there's Teron Matthew in general, like what he is right now as a football player, what he wants, what he's looking for. And then there's the Eagles who need a player at that position who have talked to Teron Matthew, but the fit and the finances, how does that all play in? So let's first talk about Teron Matthew. I think that two glaring things stand out, right? The Chiefs, and Teron Matthew said this in this story, for the, I believe it was for the Kansas City Star that he sat down with while he was in New Orleans. The Chiefs didn't make him an offer. Yep. All right? When free agency started, they signed Justin Reed, who was a safety that you and I like, Greg Cosell like, thought he was a good good uh, fit for what the Eagles were going to do. Well, the Chiefs moved very quickly, signed him even before Marcus Williams signed. He was one of the first – I think he he signed after Quandre Diggs, um, but was like the next big-name safety to sign. And he actually signed for less than what Marcus Williams – got, and less than even what uh, APY on than Quandre Diggs, who's older and coming off an injury. So the Chiefs sort of got a, a, a good deal there on a young emerging player, but they did not offer Teron Matthew a contract. And I think that's, that's very telltale. Now I looked into this at the time. I've talked to some sources. I've talked to some chief sources. I've talked to some other sources who've watched chief state, right? The feedback I got was Teron Matthew does not run like he used to. Hmm. All right. Does not run like he used to. And that's a big part of his game. He is not a box safety. I think we know that he's not the biggest guy in the world. What made him the honey badger was his ability to play the post, play the slot. He's pretty fast off the edges, so he could blitz a little bit. I mean, he could come into the box and make a tackle. He's not terrible at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not like an Asante Samuel-type tackler. He can can play the game, but that wasn't the number one thing for him. But if you lose that ability a little bit, and you're not necessarily a guy who's going to come up in the box a lot, then you're, you're not the player that you used to be. So as one source put it to me, um, this was a chief source said that with with Justin Reed, they felt like they were getting a little bit more because Justin Reed is younger. He's ascending sure. and he's actually a pretty good tackler. I think he's a little bit better in the box um, than Tehran. Now, maybe he can't do what Tehran did a year or two ago as far as just being like everywhere all the time. But he's still pretty good. Greg Cosell loved him. Yeah. So, so what I mean, that to me makes of it. I know there's a big demand right from the Eagles fans for like go go get teron matthew go yeah. get, he's out there he's out get there he's football. out there get the but name do you, it, it, all, it almost feels i don't want to make a direct parallel but clearly namdi had lost the ability to run and was not the same player when he came to the eagles that scheme fit yeah this game didn't fit either but anyway uh he, could, he couldn't i had, i mean listen i had it from pretty good that he couldn't run from yeah. like, oh, eagles that, sources that it too because remember they tried to change the scheme around a little bit to 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 fit him up, I mean, eventually you got to play man. Like, yeah, like Greg says, sometimes yeah. you're going to play man, sometimes you're going to be zone. He went back to San Francisco, which played that scheme he played in Oklahoma. I mean, in Oakland, 
and he wasn't good in San Francisco. So it wasn't just the scheme. No, you know, it was everything. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he had lost a step. Yeah, he was toast. And plus, they were coming out of lockout. And and Juan Castillo was the was the was wasn't he the DC then? He was the defensive coordinator. That was yeah, a nightmare. So yeah. you add all that up, it, it was a disaster. Um, yeah. So what's interesting here is right. So they they didn't offer. I'm pretty certain they didn't offer Rodney McLeod a contract to go back. He signed with the with the Colts. Right. Um, you've got you got Anthony Harris, who is expected to start at one safety spot. He turns 31 in October. Matthew turns 30 next month. It, it's just, it, you're patchworking this thing again. Why not? And it wouldn't preclude them from drafting the safety, obviously, because they have 10 picks as we speak, five in the right. first three rounds. But if you sign Matthew and you have Harris, that rookie theoretically is not going to start in year one. Mm -hmm. Even if it, even if they would take one as high as the second round, you, you want that guy to play. And then the G, the uh, Roseman said, uh, where, "Where did he where did he speak recently about this?" Uh, was it the uh, owners' meetings, meetings or was it? The owners yeah, meetings. he wants yeah. the rookies to play. Well, if that's right. the case. Are you drafting a safety if you sign or drafting a safety early if you sign Matthews? So it it's it kind of plays into each other, right? So that, that's a big thing because let's say the Eagles want to take a safety in the second round, right? And they want to play him. If you have Teron Matthew on your team, you're not – I mean, you're not benching Teron Matthew, I don't think. You're not paying him all that money to just sit on the bench and play a rookie. Got, and they've, right. Now, could you bench Anthony Harris or really like you did with Eric Wilson? I mean, I suppose you could if your rookie was playing well enough. But let's – again, Teron Matthew – I want to give the right credit. He the, the reporter's name is Sam McDowell from the Kansas City Star. In yeah. the story, he said, he specifically said, I was so heartbroken by not being back with the Chiefs, not even being offered. And he, and he said, you know what? I would have taken the Eric Reed deal. Okay. Justin Reed deal. I'm sorry. He said, I would have taken the Justin Reed deal, which was like three years, 39 million. He said, he said, I would have tried to negotiate it because that's what everybody does. But in the end to stay, I would have taken it. So, bam, you always say the words like the answers to the test, right? We know that he would have loved – he would take a three-year, $39 million deal. We also know nobody's offering him that. Right yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> it's funny. As you're saying that, well, that would explain the, what, what, what we had heard. Okay, I, I didn't know about that, What this the article. But we had heard uh, this past week because we were checking into how interested the Eagles are. The word around the league is that he had a, still had a pretty high opinion of himself, he and Tom Conn and his agent, about the money. So this, mm -hmm. this article that you're talking about would play into that. Now, what is your understanding in terms of one year versus two year or multiple years with him? Do you, have you well, that, that's what I – yeah, I was going to – I'm getting into here is that he, yeah. he said he would take three for 39 because, you know, he felt like that's a discount. All right. That's still 13 million a year for three years. He didn't say, oh, I'll, 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 I would definitely have taken one year of 13 million from the yeah. Chiefs. So he wants, I think by reading that article, you can tell he would still like a multi year deal. Maybe he's understanding now he's not making 13 to 14 APY. But I, I, the, from looking around, talking to people in the league, I don't suspect he's really in it for a one year deal. Now, shoot, if you're out there for another month or two, who knows what happens, but I don't know. But I suspect a two-year deal would get it done. But again, we're talking about not two years at, you know, $11.5 million total. You know, we're, we're talking about two years at probably, and this is me just guessing here, if he's, you know, wanted 13 or he thought that was a discount, he's, you know, you're probably looking at 10 to 12 million a year now, which is doable. But again, it puts you in a position where now you've got to play this guy. And if you even think in your evaluation – that he's good, but he's lost a little bit. I can't do yeah. as much with him. How are you going to get in bed with him for two definite years? Right? Or, no, exactly. You're or, not. Or I'm going to. I'll, I'll give multiple years, but I'm not giving him any guaranteed money in year two. Well, we know if he wants two years, he wants guaranteed. Luck. So that you're not cutting Luck. him after a year. Do it. You, you have this intel that uh, you seem to be pretty strong. That he's people you've spoken to thinks he's lost a step. Mm -hmm. To me, that tells me I'm going one year with this guy. If I do it all, he just turned. He's basically thirty. That's the way the league sees him. Mm -hmm. And guys don't get. It's just so. It's extremely rare guys get better in their thirties. It's Tom Brady. Uh, so <laughs> when when you play with your legs, your your safety or corner, you don't get better in your thirties. So 
you might get more savvy, but you're not, your explosive athleticism isn't going to get any better. So to me, I'm 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 not doing it. Uh, right. More past a year. I also, as you said, Anthony Harris is on a one-year deal, and I understand you know it's not a big money commitment. But I, if the GM is true to what he said, if they draft a safety in the second round, as high as the second round, I, I want that guy to play, don't you? Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Look, and I, I don't, I don't want to give the wrong picture here. I think Teron Matthew is still a pretty good say. I, no one's told me he can't play anymore. They just said he lost. Coach Hell liked him. Greg actually. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think he's still an upgrade over either Anthony Harris or Marcus Epps. So I'm not, I think the Eagles are right to have discussions with him and see if they can get him at a workable number without overpaying for what they think he really is. Because remember, the Eagles have a slot corner in Avante Maddox who's getting paid like a pretty good slot corner. You're not taking him off the field, which means you're not asking Teron Matthew to play Avante Maddox's position. All right. And again, Teron's not a a full-time box safety, and that's actually what Anthony Harris is best at. So what you want Teron Matthew to mainly come into here is to be your post safety. Now, because he's still a pretty skilled athlete, Gannon can kind of walk him around the field, do some things, and then drop him into the post while the snap's going on, and he'd probably be better at that than both Epps or Harris or anybody else on the team's roster. So he could bring value. But I, what, what Howie is saying is, look, I, you know, I've got all these spots for young guys. I'm going to draft young guys. I want to get them on the field and grow this thing up. So I understand why they're not in a rush to dole out all this money for a guy that's not part of the future, may not help you as much as he would have helped you two years ago, doesn't play as many roles on this team as he would have two years ago. It, it, you can just see how the fit, the idea and concept and the reality are a little bit different, I think. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, they got to be careful with this one. Um, it's just, to me, you want to get younger. They've done a good job of getting younger. You know, once they moved on from Jason Pierce, it's amazing how their median age <laughs> way down. Right. Um, they, they, it's just really that Kelsey Lane Johnson, they don't have a lot of older players. We know about Graham, we know about Cox, uh, but they're a relatively young team and they really need a young safety that again, the, their needs are the same as they were two months ago. I'm, for agency, remember folks, in, generally is about immediate needs and the draft is about future needs with hopefully you get some of your current needs matched. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting. I, we know they, they made a significant offer to Marcus Williams would have filled that immediate need. Uh, that's right. So, so they clearly, um, the fact that they made him a monster offer or a significant offer, excuse me, it basically, mm -hmm. basically gave what, uh, pretty close to what Baltimore offered. Right. Tell me that they want to do something significant at safety. But to me, Tyron Matthew at, at 30 years old, I, I don't call it significant. I mean, he's a great name. Maybe mm -hmm. that's all of Famer, but he's near the end of his career. So it doesn't solve anything for the future, if, even if they sign Matthew. Uh, it does not solve anything for the future, right? It would help them compete this year, which they do have to do, obviously. And again, they went after Marcus Williams, younger, uh, very athletic guy. But, uh, you know, this is, this is how he, you can tell, not trying to repeat some of his free agent mistakes from the past where you're, you're sort of desperate, so you're pouring a lot of money into someone who's on the other side of his career and isn't going to give you what you thought, and then you get killed for that. So we'll see. But, hey, look, the longer Teron hangs out there and doesn't sign, um, the more maybe the more – it'll be very interesting to see if he decides – if he if Teron says my cutoff date is before the draft, oh, like I'm not going to let a couple yeah. of teams draft safeties and then take myself yeah. out of the running there, you know? Yeah, he 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 honestly he's in he ain't getting anything anywhere close to what he wants if he do, if he is not signed by the draft. Right, someone's getting an incredible bargain. Right, uh, hey, he's he's not a guy you absolutely have to have. I, I'd rather Harris is it was not was very average last season to me. I'd rather. Go get a young safety and, and go from there. But uh, we shall see. Well, they safety... can. And that's that's the beauty of it. They, they can draft a safety. And if this kid's really good and Epps is playing well, then another Har Harris gets re his role relegated. And if they have to cut him like they did with Eric Wilson, I don't, they're not deep at safety. So not that they're a deep oh, at linebacker, but, uh, but Epps, before we yeah. move on, Epps is a guy they like, right? Yes. So to me, if you're signing Matthew or any other veteran safety, you're saying once again that Epps is a backup, but we all know Cosell told us, I mean, repeatedly how 
how good Epps looks on tape, why, why won't they go with him? There is no question that the team feels that Epps can run. We just talked about this with Tehran. Way better than Anthony Harris. Way better. Like, obviously, they play interchangeably, but you're going to see Anthony Harris in the box a whole lot, and you're going to see Epps out there in the field, in the post, co- in coverage a whole lot. Because Epps has the ability to turn his hips and run in a way that Anthony Harris no longer has. And I, I mean, I don't know if Anthony Harris ever had it, but he does. It, yeah. Marcus Epps is that guy for that. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's good stuff. Good conversation. So we'll have to see what happens with uh, with Matthew. I, I see how the Eagles are stuck between a rock and a hard place because, again, he is going to upgrade your team, Teron Matthew, if you brought him in. It's just at what price and at what – you know, level of stunting somebody else's growth. And that's all stuff that they have to weigh. So by the way, let's see as it goes on. He's incredible in the locker room, like an incredible emo- emotional leader. How, yeah. What, his whole story, folks, if you don't know it yet, you read it when he was with the Cardinals, how he turned his life around, his career around. Just one of the most amazing NFL stories. Um, but you can't, you have to remove the, the emotional part about it. It's about what's best for the football team. Mm-hmm. What's best is they get younger safety, they get more dynamic. And, uh, it, oh, yeah, before we move on here, listen to our last show uh, with Cosell from last week. Uh, we, you know, we went over a bunch of safeties and corners and so forth. So uh, we'll see what they do. But it, it's it's re- really interesting to see what they're going to do. To your point in the story by Sam McDowell from the KC Star, Sam went down to New Orleans where Tron was. Tron was there because he was doing something at LSU. Oh yeah, saw like, that uh, making appearance there, yeah. and Sam made a point of of pointing out that he was kicked out of LSU, and they still invite him back now to speak to kids and to do things football related. That that's a testament to how much he turned his life around, and how you know how how many schools kick a guy out of school and then bring him back. Special, to special that. That, yeah. like his one of the most unlikely stories. If you looked at where he was with substance abuse. Mm-hmm. And how he took responsibility and how he turned cleaned up his life and everything. And then he became one of the best players at his position. And quite frankly, at his height, when he was one of the top safeties in football, mm-hmm. you could have called him a hybrid player because he'd play slot. He'd play safety. You'd have him in the box. And right. I mean, if you talk to the Chiefs, they'll tell you. Yeah, he could blitz. He could do everything. They, they were not going to be an elite team without him. That's just how special he was in his day. Now, didn't the Chief, the Chiefs had a pretty bad run defense last year? Did they not? I don't have the numbers in front of me. Um, I'll check it at some point. I thought that they were uh, among the one of the uh, maybe maybe a change toward the end of the year, but um, I'm pretty sure as a team they weren't great against the run. And again, he he's not run support is not exactly where yeah, he shines, well, and it's well, it's something that um, okay. that Reed does a little bit better. All right, let's uh, let's talk about the Eagles and their draft pick. Um, Picks, I should say, yeah. fifteen and eighteen. You know, we we our our whole pod of doing the the history of fifteen, sixteen, and nineteen got ruined. So uh, <laughs> we, we, about, we have to kind of recalibrate and do fifteen and eighteen. Yeah. And you know, when you go through the the picks, Adam, there's there are some years where you say, man, the Eagles, if they played it right, could come out of here with two pretty good players. And there are some years that say, if that's what I'm getting at fifteen and eighteen it's really best that I just package these picks and try to move up into the top 10, 12, whatever it is. Um, so so let's start with the 15th overall pick, all right? And um, I don't want to go through – I mean, I'll, I'll give the last two, but I, they really shouldn't count because you should give guys some some time, right? Last year's 15th pick was Mac Jones, who had a pretty good rookie year, made the Pro Bowl and everything. Had some strange moments where he was only allowed to throw the ball three <laughs> times in the game. At Buffalo. So whatever. Um, yeah. Jerry Judy – Two years ago was the 15th pick, who actually he kind of fell to 15. He was considered a top 10 pick, but then there was some information about his, uh, I guess, his injury history that came out. He's dropped um, a lot of passes. And he, he's not yeah. been – he's going to be fine, but obviously better quarterback play from Russell Wilson will help. But, yeah, he's been disappointing, I would say, slightly. Yeah, his numbers actually dropped last year from the year before. Now some of that could be on quarterback play, but he's a slot receiver now. I mean, I think coming out of Alabama, you people thought of he was going to be this great – vertical outside threat and he's really not been that he's been more right, of a slot right. well, he's, yeah, he's, he's a not, slot receiver right. man i'm even i can't even believe it because i haven't checked the list until doing this podcast like right this sec so in real time three years ago the 15th overall pick was dwayne haskins and oh, um, that's really really tragic to even read that now um yeah. man 
mm. really feel for him and his family. So it's awful. It's just um, very bad. And, and he was really turning things around in his career with Steelers. They they tendered him as a restricted free agent. They wanted to be the yeah. backup. And twenty four years old. Yeah, we obviously very quickly here. It's uh, tragic. It's uh, too young, man. Too, yeah, too, watch too young. Chase, Chase Claypool's video, folks. If you want to get be reduced to tears, it it'll it'll tear you up, man. It was incredible. You can see yeah. it on his. Um, uh, I, I assume Facebook, but I saw it on uh, Twitter. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even enjoy reading that. I didn't. It's funny. I hadn't even looked at this this notebook here until just now. So yeah. So anyway, yeah. those are yeah, yeah. Those those are the last three picks. But it's hard because we always say you should get like three or more years. So let's go back to two thousand nine. <laughs> Some of these names are going to make you laugh. The the fifteenth overall pick in two thousand nine was Brian Cushing. Remember him, linebacker out of USC. Oh, you know what? Yeah, he. Uh, that's the kid. Uh, yeah, for the Texans, right? Right. Had some injuries. I mean, he he made one Pro Bowl. He was looking. He he, he almost has like a Leighton Vanderish like story where he was really good in his first year or two, made a Pro Bowl, and then got hurt a little bit, and then just did not, you know, wind up being, um, you know, much more than than that afterward. So uh, I don't even know if how how long he played in the league. It wasn't very. It was like maybe eight years, but he made the Pro Bowl in 2009, his first year. He had four interceptions. He had four sacks. But if you go look in his next seven years, he's just, just an okay linebacker. Yeah, lots of injuries. Yeah, and, and uh, 09 draft Yeah, uh, from New Jersey. Actually, 2011 yeah. he was pretty good. I don't want to shortchange him. 2011, he had a pretty – he's second team all pro. He faded, so he though. A lot, lot of injuries after that. Yeah. Definitely dealt with injury. He he played five games in 2012, seven games in 13, Oof. 14 in 2014. Finally played another full season in 2015, and then 13, and then five. So he yeah uh, up and down there. Yeah, he got suspended um, for violating the uh, PD policy. I uh, remember that. Um, it, it's crazy. He wound up being a trainer after that. After he was done was done playing. He actually was in uh, athletic, you know, he was training players I, uh, with the Texans right. as an assistant coach um, on Jer Bill Ryan's staff. Jersey kid, by the way. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So um, I don't know how you'd even classify. I mean, he did play eight years, so it was a it was a good pick as far as you got a player who, you know, played in the league for eight years. I don't know that he was like transformative or changed sure. the, even their defense, but he was, he was pretty good for a couple of years and then had injuries. 2010 JPP guys made three pole bowls. He's been through a lot. Uh, he's won a super bowl with the two, two super bowls, one with the giants, one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's a good pick right there um, that he was drafted by the giants and to, right after Brandon Graham. Hmm. 2011 was Mike Pouncey. The is Mike. Mike was the center for the uh, Chargers. The, was it? Yeah, it was the Chargers. I always get him and Marquise fire. confused. Right. When, Marquise was the, his brother with the Steelers. Yeah, he was right. Solid, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, Dolphins then Chargers. Dolphins Chargers. Right. That's what I was yep. thinking. Yeah, yeah he made four Pro Bowls. He was yeah. a good player, right. really good player. So we're on a good streak here. I mean, Cushing was an okay pick. JPP good pick. Mike Pouncey good pick. 2012, Bruce Irvin. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, he started still, actually. I, he was with the team last year. Out of was West, he? yeah, oh yeah, West Virginia, right? Yeah, he was out of West Virginia. Um, I forgot that he uh, he was in the league last year. I know he, you know, he won a Super Bowl with Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. As a pass rusher. I mean, I don't know if he ever had like double digits and sacks or anything yeah, he like that. Great but... for sure. A little bit above average, but wasn't great. Correct. Right. All right. Yeah. Oh my God, he was he, he was in the league last year. Yeah. With the Bears. <laughs> That's amazing. He has not had a sack since 2009, but yeah. Two, I'm sorry, yeah, 2019. Yep. He had eight and a half sacks with Carolina that year, and then none in 2020. Well, oh, he had eight and a half with Carolina in 19, huh? Well, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, it was actually the most of his career. He's never yeah. really – wait, what, you said a career high in, 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 in 19 for him? Yes, a career high. Oh, eight and a half. Well, yeah, I, I just remember him, what he had a scheme versatility. Mm -hmm. 34 outside linebacker, 43 DN, and that helped them. Mm -hmm. That's why Chicago, they're, they're, they're now playing to 43, but Chicago uh, under Matt Nagy uh, played to 34. Right. Right. Um, the next year, 2013, Kenny Vaccaro from the Saints. He was like a, he was really good his rookie year. I think he was uh, third in rookie of the year voting, but, um, and he played eight years. I don't think he played last year. Was he hurt? He was had. He 
No, he was with the Saints again, maybe for a second time. Titan. I don't remember that. Um, but look, he, he he let's put it this way: he never became quite the player people thought. Right. Uh, what a bad pick. Um, he just kind of flashed, and then the, he steadily regressed. Right. Listen, all the all these guys, all four of them saw a second contract, or five of them: Cushing, JPP, Pouncey, Bruce Irvin, and Vicaro. So that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Yep. History is showing us you're going to get a player who will start for you and play well for you, may not be a pro bowler, may not be an all pro player, but if you just put that kind of, that's the thing about the Eagles, right? They've got two blue chip players, really. They've got Darius Slay and they have Javon Hargrave. And then on defense, right? And then how many like really good players do they have on defense? Like, I feel like you go from blue chip to just average really quickly. You don't have like too many like, above average, not pro bowlers, just really good type players, okay? You either have, like, blue chippers or guys that you're really trying to upgrade from. So that's why a guy like any of these five we mentioned will probably be pretty good. Um, and we'll we'll keep the streak going there. 2014, Kyle Fuller, been a good corner in this league, right? Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been, he's been been pretty good. He's been uh, – so uh, he's been on a couple of teams. Yeah, he was an underachiever. Uh, for the Bears, and then what happened was he had a great final year. So they instead of tag, they didn't tender, they didn't uh, franchise tag him. He played it out, mm -hmm. and he had a great final year. So they 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 extended his contract. Um, yeah, you know what? That in the end, um, I remember the Eagles calling the Bears about him, mm -hmm. but obviously nothing ever materialized. But yeah, he's right. a good player. yeah, it's a good yeah. One. I mean, like, look, if you drafted a player of Kyle F at fifteen of Kyle Fuller's caliber, let's say they took. Um, Trent McDuffie, okay? And he was of Kyle Fuller's caliber, and you put him across from Darius Slay. You're, you're feeling pretty good about that. So that's good. All right. Uh, 2015, 16, and 17. Melvin Gordon, Corey Coleman, Malik Hooker. So now we're starting to get into some territory where, I mean, well, Melvin Gordon's hurt. good. That's, he got hurt. He had significant injury problems with the Colts. Um yeah. It was not a performance issue, but they could not justify bringing him back because he just kept getting hurt. Now, Corey Coleman was a bust. Yes. That's your first bust. Right. I know. That's the first bust. Melvin Gordon's been been pretty good. good. He made two Pro Bowls earlier in his career, um, but it's not great. I don't, I've don't. i never thought of him as great, just as a, as a pretty good pretty running good. back. I mean, yeah. he, he, he had a microfracture surgery after his first season. Mm -hmm. um, then he became sort of a grinder. As Cosell always calls him a grinder with his tape because he's not explosive anymore. But right. he's... I'm like this sh shifty, smart downhill player, which he was not at Wisconsin. He was incredibly explosive, but mm -hmm. uh, plus with the Chargers, he had some lines weren't great, and uh, he did a nice job. I I was very surprised that he did as well as he did with Denver last week. Uh, yeah, me too. And now I heard, uh, didn't he visit somewhere? A uh, Baltimore, yeah, he, he Baltimore. Worked. Bartles I'm all for it. Interest. He changed agents. Joe Panos, the former Eagles offensive lineman, so mm -hmm. is an agent. He, he he picked him up, signed him. Right. Well, hey, listen, I'm all for it because, you know, I am a uh, Javante Williams owner and fantasy keeper. So if, if Melvin wants to take his services somewhere else, <laughs> I'm okay. with that. is going to be – I got him as my number two back. Obviously, no. John Taylor's one, but Javante is going to be special. I'm telling you. All right. I'm loving hearing that. And then, of course, 2018 was Colton Miller of the uh, Oakland Raiders then, Las Vegas Raiders now. Struggled his first year, year and a half, but then he's he's started um, pretty much every game. That extension. Yeah, good Look, yeah. this is like what? This, you, you made me kind of optimistic with this 15 pick. Yeah, no, I think 15 is pretty good. You know, it was back when, when I was looking at when you had 15, 16, and 19, you could tell that there's a starts to get the drop off 16, 17, 18, 19, and we'll get into 18 in a second. But at 15, again, odds are you're not going to get a superstar, but you're going to get a pretty good player. Let's see. We just went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten names from 2009 to 2018. And really the only bust was Corey Coleman. Um, and five of them made the Pro Bowl. So you got a 50% chance based on the history to get a Pro Bowler. Right. That's not bad. So let's go back to 18 now. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if, for those who picked in uh, I got a bad feeling about 18. <laughs> <laughs> about 18th overall? Let's see if I'm right. Go ahead. Well, all right. So the last three we'll go through really quickly. And again, we'll try not to judge too much because yes. it's, you need more time. But this past year, it was Jalen Phillips from Miami. Um, the year before, 2020, was Austin Jackson, the tackle for the Dolphins. Miami okay. again. He got benched. They don't know what to do with him. Okay. Yeah. Right, and then 2019 was the center Garrett Bradbury, who was chosen by the Minnesota Vikings. He's a decent player, yeah. I mean, he's decent. Okay, just decent. Yeah, I, I would say that too. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to 2009. It's kind of a ten-year thing. All right, nine. Robert Ayers, defensive end from Denver. Robert Ayers is disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he never never made a Pro I mean, Bowl. I know. Um, so low his college tape. Yes, I remember um, that. I remember Greg just raved about him, and then we would. He was long, you know, he, he was explosive in college. He just never really made it. He never did it. Just never became the player he should have been. Right. He was basically a backup by his fourth year in the league. Um, although he did start for the Giants when he was 30 year old, 30, but that's because they had injuries. Uh, and then Tampa, he started some games in 16 and 17. In fact, he's been out of the league since 2017. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, he played nine years, but was a backup for about six of them. So, I mean, he was just, you know. Not what you want. Just okay. No, yeah, you would like to do better. Now, the next year, 2010, Mar Mar is where Marquise Pouncey gets drafted great from pick. by Pittsburgh. Oh, Very pick. good pick. And of course, that's the Steelers, so you're not surprised. Right? Home run. Yeah. yeah, home run pick. He's been in the league. Let's see. Well, he retired right after yeah, last, yeah. after 2020, but he made three, four, five, six. He made like he, he might be a Hall of Famer. He made <laughs> how many, how many nine, Pro nine Pro Bowls and two yeah, All Pro teams. Yeah, so I think, yeah, yeah, that's Kelsey's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> right. 2011 at 18th overall was Corey Legit, the defensive just, tackle yeah. in San Diego. Hey, just, he, he, I think he's done. I think he's. Yes, he's uh, done. He did not play last year. Yeah, he just okay. Just okay. okay. Decent right. player, nothing special. Right. I mean, he was an end in a 3 4. I mean, the most he ever had was seven sacks his second year. And then after that, yeah. five and a half. But his last six years of his career, he never had more than three sacks or I mean, anything was, like that. So. You know, and uh, 34 defensive linemen you know, strictly don't get a lot of sacks. So, um, right. Okay. Right. If I mean, if you put a player of his caliber on the Eagles this year, you're not that much better. You won't be happy. You would be. Right. I, I, he was just an okay, little slightly above average, but. Right. Corey legit. Yeah. Wow. I think it was legit, right? Legit. Legit. I, I think it's. Way. Yeah. I think it's legit. L I U G E T. Isn't it? Is that how you spell Legit. Yeah. I think it's pronounced legit. legit. Either yeah. way. We know who he is. All right, the following year, 2012, the 18th overall pick was Melvin Ingram, the pass rusher out of Illinois. That's a good one. Who, man, his career did not start off well. He only had about, what, six Bad sacks news. after his first three years. Then he kind of took off, I guess, the scheme changed. What's that? He had a bad knee injury. Oh, that's right. That's right. His first two years. Yeah, because he only played four games in his second season and nine the third man, season. Once he got rolling, they, they wound up extending him. Uh, franchise mm -hmm. extended him. He signed a monster extension with yep. the Chargers. Good career. That's, that's a, by the way, that's a great pick. 18? Yeah, yeah okay. he made three poor bowls. Absolutely. That, 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 and, he, and by the way, Chiefs, I know uh, we were able to talk to them uh, at the Combine. They were really happy with it after that trade they got from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They got nothing out of him. Boy, they, he, he helped the Chiefs when they got him. Yeah, he would certainly make the Eagles better if a player of his caliber were on them this yeah. year. So that that's something to keep in mind. Uh, 2013, we've already talked about him. The 18th overall pick was Eric Reed out of LSU for the yeah. 49ers. Justin Reed's brother, yeah. Sorry, yeah, we didn't talk about him. That That's Justin Reed's brother. Yeah, yeah Eric yeah. Reed. Yeah, pretty good player. We know, um, you know what happened with him and with the Niners and – uh, mm -hmm. The kneeling, the the league, the teams held it against them, which is not right, but they did. Right. Uh, so, that's, but he did get it. He did get a contract with Carolina. He came back, yeah, he came back right, but it they he didn't get the answer she should have gotten. Was a pretty good player, and it's um, there's no question there was stuff held against him, and mm -hmm. it is what it is. Yeah, he had seven interceptions in his first two seasons. I mean, it was really good. He had made the Pro Bowl as a rookie. Good hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I mean, his his career really – I mean, 2015, his last three years when he did – when he was playing with the 49ers, they were just okay. So, um, I don't know if it was more like the, the first two years of the scheme, but he was a good player. I mean, if you put him on the Eagles this year, this coming year, you'd feel pretty good about upgrading over what you have. I would yeah. say that. Sure. 
All right, the next uh, few picks, 2014, 15, 16, Calvin Pryor, defensive back for the Jets, mm-hmm. then Marcus okay. Peters. We all know Marcus Peters from oh, Washington. That's a homer. That's a homer. Marcus, yep. okay. so, so Calvin Pryor was out of Louisville, correct? Yes. He was terrible. Yeah, he, he never made it. It, it. Yeah, he played three years and he was done. He, he, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, he, he, had, he started three games in three years, so that oh, was a bad pick. Oh. Right. That was the Jets also picking, and they had kind of a history of not picking well. What year was this? 2014. 14, okay. Was that John Idzik maybe making that pick? Might have been. Boy, that's a bad one. He might be right. Yeah. All right, so Pryor was not a good pick. Uh, 2015, Marcus Peters, a very good cornerback. That's a hit. I mean, he's been on a couple of teams, but he's played well, you know, obviously with the Chiefs, and then he went to – Baltimore? Rams. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Ravens, and then he went to – well, you're right, the Rams, then yeah. the Ravens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, – and he's made – he was made like four all-pro teams, three pro – yeah, listen, you put Marcus Peters wow. on the Eagles, you're good. Four all-pro? Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty That's good. Right? Yep. Hold okay. on, let me recheck that. Let me recheck what, that. You mean uh, uh, pro ball? I'm sorry, three pro bowls, two all pros. Still pretty – he's really good, like the shame he tore his ACL, but yeah, wow, okay. Yeah. You know why I doubled it up is because he was on two different teams in 2019 with the Rams and the Ravens, and it kind of looks like they gave him a pro bowl for being on each one. But, no, it's not a repetitive. He was just a pro <laughs> bowl – I mean, all pro player that year. So, yeah. That's a hit. So, yeah, you put a player like that on the Eagles, you're doing well. 2016, Ryan Kelly from the Indianapolis Colts. He's been a, a starter for them and a three-time pro player. bowler. Yep, good player. Uh, you, he could be a nice type of uh, replacement for Kelsey. If, like, let's say you got Tyler Lindenbaum at 18 and he wound up making three Pro mm-hmm. Bowls. 2017, 18, and we'll finish it off, would be Adoree Jackson in 2017 and Jair Alexander in 2018. Jair, home run. Yep. For grand slam, he's, he's one of the best players in football at his position. Yep. Um, who is the other player? Adoree Jackson. He's been – boy, the, the Titans – his problem was he came out of USC, really fast guy, way too many injuries. The the Titans did not tag him, they let him walk. And this is a team that struggled at corner. They didn't want him. Um, the, Dave Gettleman, one of the worst contracts he ever did, he did a terrible contract with Dory Jackson. Mm-hmm. I think he restructured a terrible contract. Just I don't know what Gettleman was thinking. It made no sense. that the, the, the Titans at the time were so bad at corner, and they didn't want him back, and then you're, you're paying him all this money. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was that was dumb. Oh, so wow. let's recap this then. From 2009 to 2018, 10 picks. Two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? How many hits? Robert Ayers want, is is not a hit. Yes. Marquise Pouncey is a hit. hit. So that's a hit. Corey yeah. Legit, Legit, uh, mm-hmm. Legit. Uh, okay. You, let's that put that in the okay category. Single. <laughs> right. So you got one miss, one hit, one okay. Yeah. Next one, one was Mel- Melvin Ingram. We said was a hit, right? Oh yeah. yeah right. Two hits, one right. miss, one okay. Eric Reed, you want to put him in the okay? Yeah, I think he. I think he's a hit. I mean, like, how many years did he play for the Niners? Uh four or five. Hold well, on. then he you had the kneeling thing, which right. You know, well, yeah, he played five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then two that. more, Carolina. All right, you want to give him a hit? All right. So three hits, one miss, one okay. Calvin Pryor is a total yeah. miss. So that's three hits. Two misses, one okay. Marcus Peters, that's a hit. So that's four. Yeah. Ryan Kelly was a hit. That's five. We're, I guess we put Adore Jackson in the okay, right? Yes. I put him in a miss. Wow. I mean, he got a second contract. It just wasn't with the Titans, but he's not like a yeah, I know. No, here's what happened. The Titans drafted him. They let him walk. That's a miss right there. Okay. I, just because he gets a contract doesn't mean that team is right. Dave Gelman did a terrible contract. Embarrassing. That's fair. One of many mistakes that he made. I, up to this day, I give the agent credit. I'll never understand why they did that contract. It's I don't blame the contract negotiator. If Gellin says do what it takes to get the guy, you do it. You do what you're told. But that's gotcha. ooh, all right. So that would be a third miss, and then Jair Alexander is a hit. So you had oh, three. Oh let's see, you had six hits, three misses, and one was oh, we we deemed okay. I mean, you can say Eric Reed's above average. If you you give him a double, you know, not, not, if you don't want to give him a home run, fine. I give him a double. No, I put him in the hit list. I, I put him in the hit. But oh, I see what you're saying. If you want to knock him down, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm yeah. fine with that. Um, yeah. But the bottom line is, it, 18's a little bit better than I thought. Wow. Okay. Me too. Me too. I was a little wow. surprised. I, I the 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 uh, the vibe I got from you wasn't going to be good. I don't know why. But... No, I know. I kept you in suspense, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you got me. So, do you still think 
it would be – I'm still okay with the idea of packaging up to trade up for an elite prospect. But, oh, yeah. Um, oh, I've yeah. come down on, you know, if, you, if you're drafting twice from 15 to 20-something or 30 that, you know, you're probably going to get one hit, one miss, or one average player, one below average player. I mean, they, th- this draft, the way it shakes out, you, you might be able to come out with two players who are, make a pretty good impact on your team. Uh, I, I would say, okay, so they're picking at 15 and 18. Mm-hmm. The, if they stay where they're at, see, they're not taking a linebacker. We know that. I know looking at our message board, our Facebook board, I know it's really split. There's some people who love Traylon Burke. Some of the fans love Traylon Burke. Some don't. Um, Andrew Booth will be a good pick. That'd be fine out of Clemson. Uh huh. Uh, this, this is right around the area where he should go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cosell guy, Daxton Hill, Dax Hill. Mm, Greg, pick there. Yep, uh, that would be, that, that'll be a nice pick right there. If they ever had the the decency to take a safety in the first round, that would be a a good one. So we we have a. We'll, we'll talk more about him closer to the draft. We're we're, we're getting. I'm talking to more defensive back coaches. Mm-hmm. Everybody likes him. Some don't love him as much as Greg did. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, who's had maybe the best offseason of any player for this draft, um, who it's rare to see a player move up. You know, it's generally a fallacy, but um, he's definitely helped himself. There's no question about it. Chris Olave would be a good pick um, there. Uh, I don't, you know, he he's going to go somewhere, you know, middle you know, 15 to, to 25. McDuffie, who you mentioned. Um, yeah, look, 15 is not a bad spot, but understand there's a drop off. Yeah. And, that's- yeah, and by the way, th- these last three years that we kind of glossed over because it's only three, if those guys don't make a big step, that's going to that's gonna be rough because the Garrett – what did I say? Garrett Bradbury and uh, uh, Austin Jackson and Jalen Phillips. I think Jalen had a pretty decent year for Miami last year. He had uh, eight and a half sacks, so that looks yeah. good. But, yeah, you know, you hope that that continues for them because otherwise that, that would not have been a good three-year run I mean, right there. It is uh- – Iguanu, the 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 offensive lineman. I mean, he um, Iki Iguanu, he may be there at, at at fifteen. I think he goes top ten. Oh my God! Yeah, I would think. I mean, unless something happens there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't think Stingley makes it to fifteen. I'd be very surprised. We know yeah. just going. You guys aren't getting anywhere close to him. We'll get we'll get up to trade possibilities on our Thursday show. We're going to start hitting on that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I. To me, some of the guys in the mid first round of fifteen, Tra- uh, Trayvon Walker's not going to make it to fifteen. No way, based on what I know, what I heard this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a, he's he's more highly thought of than I originally thought. I, I and I'm very interested to see what Cosell says uh, yeah. later today to us when we will take that show. Um, but uh, no, Kyle Hamilton's not making it to fifteen. I know people are because of his slow forty time, and I kind of laugh like you would be ignoring. <laughs> you basically would be completely ignoring his tape. I think he's dropped out of the top ten. Yeah, you. Yeah, he'd be like, "Oh, that tape, that all that work that you did in the field means nothing. You ran a slow forty, so you stink." <laughs> that yeah. would be hysterical. I, I kind of funny. I, I, the, uh, the what does Cosell call him, the internet guru? Shit, Greg's got a funny name. <laughs> yeah. The, uh... <laughs> all right. So just anyway. for fun, Adam, because the Eagles did pick at one point 15, 16, and nineteen, I'm going to read through you the picks at nineteen that they okay. now don't have to make. Sure. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to tell everybody to check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan, by the fan. That's their motto. So make sure you're checking them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation. We'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you happen to get out there to Sky Motor Cars in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. Now, we talk about these points in the draft where you start to see a drop-off. We just went through 18th overall for the last 10 years, and more often than not, you get a good player. Well, here's 19th overall starting in 2009. Jeremy Macklin, not bad. Then Sean Witherspoon, Prince Amukamara, Shea McClellan, Justin Pugh, Jawan James, Cam Irving, Shaq Lawson, OJ Howard, Leighton Vander Esch, Jeffrey Simmons, Damian Arnett, and Jim Jamin Davis. Talk about a mixed bag of Jamin Davis. Wow. Years. Yeah. 
Yeah, they, there, was, there was a long span in there from, I'd say, Weatherspoon, Amukamara, McClellan, Pugh, Juwan James, Irving, Shaq Lawson, Howard, where are any of those guys considered above average? Oh, um, Prince was uh, Prince was, has been a solid player. No, that's you a know hit. What Prince was. It's just been a while. I forgot he was a pretty solid oh, player earlier in oh, his career. Oh, mess by the Bears. Was it the Bears? Yeah, they let him go, right? They drafted Stop. him. and then let, No, the Giants drafted Prince Amukamara, didn't they? You know, I'm with Shea McClellan. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's McClellan, that was bad. Give me that list again. McClellan missed. That was a miss. Yeah, Prince. Justin Pugh is just okay. I know he's playing still, but he's just okay. That's a hit. They, they yeah, got it okay. Juwan James, he's a backup, right? Mixed. Yeah, mi- mixed, very mixed. Yeah, Cam Irving. Miss. Yeah. Shaq Lawson's okay. He's, he's you know, yeah, he's, he's all right. He, it was funny. I remember talking to the Bills about him uh, – he had a big final year of his contract to get a nice free agent deal. Yeah. Um, but, okay, who who else? O.J. Howard. I, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll bet I got that one wrong. I, I was shocked. He did. He was such a disappointment. If Tom Brady can't get you going, forget it. He's Looks good against the Eagles, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, he did. That's right. He could still see him running down that seam or whatever the heck he did. Yeah. I mean, Van Der Eich looked good his first year, but then he sort of got exposed as the, yeah. as the career went on and then the yeah. neck. Neck also, injury. hey, look, Jeffrey Simmons, great pick by Tennessee. Great he was oh. supposed to go higher. He just was coming off the knee injury. Yeah, but, hey, yeah, great pick. The really odd off-the-field issue, which got cleared up. Um, and he's been incredible. Yeah, Cosell said – was he on our show when he said it was the closest to Richard Seymour that he's seen since Seymour Yes, was- yes he's Pretty a big fan. Yeah. Now, Arnett has just been a disaster yeah. of a disaster. I mean, You don't really have but you, there's stuff I'm just not going to get into. He, you write it. You just nailed it. He's an absolute disaster. Some right. of out there on Twitter, uh, in his bio, jeez, uh, it's just mm. what an absolute disaster. What the hell the Raiders were thinking with this kid? They clearly did not do very good homework. That was terrible, right. as Stephen A. Smith would say. And by the way, real quick, the the picks at 16, remember the Eagles were at 15, 16, and 19. Now they're 15 and 18. They, when we went through 18, it was pretty good. But the picks at 16 over the last 10 years are very – some of them are extremely questionable. Going 2000, Larry English, then Derek Morgan, then Ryan Kerrigan. All right, Ryan Kerrigan's a good player. Get no qualms with that. Then Quinton yep. Copels, Oof. EJ Manuel, uh, Ryan Shazier, good pick. But got hurt, unfortunately, but he was a two-time Pro Bowler. Then Kevin Johnson, the cornerback, who never really panned out. Taylor Decker, okay. Marlon Humphrey, really good corner. Tremaine Edmonds, um, good safety. And then Brian Burns, A.J. Terrell, Zavin Collins. So earlier, it seemed like this thing was not good early on, and then it got better. Tremaine Edmonds still uh, – uh, we're talking about the Steelers' safety, right? Yeah, the two-time Pro Bowler. Uh, he's no, available. No. Isn't it? Isn't it? Brother. Right? I'm thinking. I think that's his brother, Tremaine Edmonds, isn't it? Uh, now I can't remember. Uh, give me one second. I'm drawing a blank here. One's Terrell. I think Terrell, Terrell is. Yeah, it's Terrell. a safety. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremaine is the linebacker for the Bills. Great yeah. with the Bills. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, 18th overall was Terrell Edmonds in the 18 draft. Uh, he, I'm sorry, he was 28th overall. He's still mm-hmm. out there, by the way. Yeah, I, I screwed up there. He is but still out there. He, uh, yeah, he, he's. I remember when he didn't get tagged, people were like, whoa, and now you see why. Right, right. It's it's interesting. What it really shows you when I read this, like the good teams that draft well, no matter what, like, you know, again, Marlon Humphrey, good pick at 16 because the Ravens picked oh, him. Uh, He's great. Uh, R- oh. Ryan Shazier by the Steelers. They're good at picking guys. They, he was a two-time Pro Bowler before he got hurt. Well, the Bills. Not doing well. Didn't yeah, the Bills, who were not necessarily a great drafting team way back when, they yes. took E.J. Manuel. The Jets took Quentin Copels. Funny so, story on A.J. Yeah. Manuel. Funny story. So mm-hmm. was it the 13 draft, if I'm not mistaken? 14, 13? Was it 13? That would be the 2013 draft. Yeah. Everyone with this, this, the Bills fans, if you watch me on YouTube, they pointed at each other. No one will take responsibility for that pick. They knew they missed it after it was drafted. It's kind of uh, like the Joey Harrington pick where Matt Millen, like something happened. Like it was supposed to be Quentin Jammer the next day. Mm-hmm. Someone moved Joey Harrington on the draft board above. Uh, Would the owner come in and just? I don't know. If you talk to people with the Lions today, they they, they still have no idea what the hell happened. Yeah, but uh, the EJ Manuel pick, um, super nice guy by the way. He's uh, been all of us on NFL radio, and he um, he's got a media career. 
pretty sharp guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, as a quarterback, he was horrendous. Um, he just was overdrafted. He should have been – here's what happened. He should have been a third-round pick. Mm-hmm. They were dying for a quarterback, and they had a bad grade on They just – they clearly didn't grade him well, and they paid for it. And when you miss on a quarterback, folks, I don't care what team – if you draft a quarterback in the first round and you miss, there's a reason why you're bad. And that miss set them back. You can't miss on a quarterback in the first round. It, it's going to crush it. I would tend to agree with you on that. I would. Now, the only name that the, the only time the Eagles picked that we saw was uh, in 2009 when they picked 19th and they picked Jeremy Macklin. Good pick. Hit. Yeah, that was definitely a hit. Oh. Yeah, that was good for them. All right. So why don't we hold off on the Ask AT, ITB? Yeah. We'll get because we spent a, a good deal of time on these picks and and Trey and uh, Teron Matthew and everything. So we'll get to that a little later in the week. And uh, the, by the way, the 2009 pick there at 16 overall, Larry English. I can honestly tell you, I don't remember anything about Larry English. I don't Here's even know what position he played. Here's what happened. He was, a, he was a stand-up pass rusher. Outstanding senior ball. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to guess without looking, Northern Illinois. Actually, I'm going to look it up now that you mentioned sure. it. <laughs> he was tremendous at the senior ball. In fact, was he a first-rounder of the uh, the Chargers? I think it was the Chargers, 2009. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got it right. Yeah, he was. He was um, – Northern Illinois, I was right. Well, how the hell do I remember that? Yeah, he, I just remember him killing it at the Senior Bowl. And he right. was a disappointment. Um, this is the time teams don't – it's not as bad as it used to be. Eagles have made so many mistakes with the Senior Bowl over drafting guys. Mm-hmm. But this is the time in the early 2000s, late 2000s, when teams are overdrafted because of a great Senior Bowl week. It did happen. The guys would move up way too much. Larry English was a perfect example of that. Was he a total bust? No, but he was a disappointment. I'll leave it at that. There you go. Uh, all right, so I'll leave you with this, Adam. Since 1990, the Eagles have only picked 15th, between 15 and, and 18, twice. They had the 15th overall pick in 2003 and the 16th in 2004. Fifth, do you remember who they picked in 2003, 15th overall? Lee Toe Shepard? No, that was 2002. 2003 okay. was Jerome McDougal. Oh, defensive end out we of will, Miami. We will get we're we're going to have we should have Joe Banner on before the draft. Mm-hmm. We got to go he he's we got to talk to him about that one cuz that story was crazy. Do you remember what was your first year covering the Eagles? 08, 07, 08? 05. 05. Oh, oh the, that's right. You were the TL year. Yeah, that's right. You've told that story before. <laughs> McDougal's story is ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous how they yeah. He was the second best pass rusher for the. Didn't they trade up for him? If I'm not mistaken, um, that's a good question. I don't remember, but they they probably did, knowing the Eagles. Nice guy, but he the a total mess. And the stuff that happened leading up to the draft should have been a, a clue. So Ooh. that was, um, you know, and I know I know obviously getting shot. Yeah, uh, had a damper on his career, but I don't think he was off to a great start. He wasn't even before that. So you never know if that was going to be. Yeah. A hit or not. Now, the very next year, in 2004, they picked 16th overall. Do you remember who they took? Oh, four. This uh, one we call a big-time hit. Oh, oh, four. Why am I, why am I uh, drawing a damn blank? Go ahead. Sean Andrews, who, had he stayed healthy and not had the back, yeah. probably would have been the Larry Allen. He, he, he got hurt, but, yeah, right, he was an unbelievable talent. Um, just talking to Eagles back then, you know, they, they were like, just, this was Andy's guy. This was, uh, as I understood, said it back then, I remember doing reporting for the draft and that was the guy that I put on the, on my board. He, this is the guy that he wanted. Mm-hmm. He just l- raved about him pre-draft to anyone who would listen. Right. And they went up getting him and it looked like they were going to be right. He was special. And then, um, so, what did back series of back surgeries, injuries or something? Uh, the back, yeah, yeah. Back injury they, ruined his career, basically. Yeah, and they brought in his brother, Stacy. Uh, did Stacy Andrews? Play? Uh, he played. Well, yeah, he played. He just did not play for very that. well, and okay. he never wound up being the starter. I mean, he was only there for a year, I think, and then they, Remember, he they released him. ACL, didn't they, he before they signed him? Didn't they what? Didn't he? Didn't didn't he tear his ACL the year before? Yeah, he he had torn his ACL with the Bengals. I think he was a franchise tag player for the Bengals, but tore his ACL was out. Okay. for the year then the Eagles signed him and you know his inability to be able to play they constantly said was due to him coming back from yeah. oh Andy the, 
Yeah. Andy was making excuse after excuse with Stacey Andrews. I remember oh, that. Oh, man. I learned so much about the kick leg and the plant leg. That That's year. it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Good memory you have because I remember Post going leg. to practice or OTAs mm -hmm. or maybe training camp. And, and he brought what you just brought up. He was talking about how he couldn't, the, the, the surgically repaired knee. There was something mm -hmm. like he couldn't fire off. Right. Man, you got a great memory because I, yep. I could not remember exactly what he said. Uh, like, like, you just nailed it. And I just remember like being so disappointed because they they spent this money and I wanted to they raved about him behind the scenes. They're like, oh, this is gonna be a great move. Mm -hmm. Brother, this guy could play, multi-positional player. What a disappointment. Yeah, it was very much so. I just can't believe now that I look at it that that's the only times that the Eagles have picked between 15 and 19 since 1990. Isn't that crazy? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. Between 15 and 18, because 19 was Jeremy Macklin in um, 2009. But yeah, that's wow. it. It's odd. But the it's odd crazy to learn on ITB. <laughs> uh, 15. Yeah, I'm looking at the the whole list now. Since they, that's crazy, unbelievable. The, like you said, the odd things that you learn on <laughs> ITB. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. A big thanks to our producer, Hunter Brody. Check out his work on YouTube. His channel is called Sports Talk with Broads, and his website is broadsmedia.com. You can follow him on Twitter at Broads81. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.